RCX listeners, uh, new listeners, old listeners, everyone in between. I'm Natalie Doggett here with uh, Jonathan of Shearwater, and we're going to do an interview. Anything you'd like to say before we start? I don't have any last words, no. <laughs> Alrighty, sweet. So how did you pick the songs for fellow travelers? They're really just an eclectic mix of everything. I just tried to pick, um, you know, I had this list of the bands that we toured with over the years, and I just tried to pick songs that I felt like I could get into, yeah, yeah. that I had something to, to, that I could bring to them, uh, and that I could fit together in a way that would give the entire album sort of an arc or a, uh, a story almost to it. Makes sense. And how much did the original versions influence you guys, like when you were in the studio recording them? Well, some of them were very different, and some of them were very much the same. Um, I mean, the, our cover of Natural One is almost like a it's like a study. You know, it's, it's almost almost note for note. Definitely. Um, and I just thought that would be neat because I like that song so much. Um, I think it's kind of a forgotten idea. Yeah. And then uh, you might want to come a little closer if the if you the microphone's going to pick this up here. Okay. And then, uh, but you know, some songs. Like the Coldplay song had changed almost entirely. Um, it just varied from song to song. The St. Vincent song, I tried to, to use a completely different approach to what the kind of approach he usually uses. Um, and the fun was in seeing you know, how the songs changed or um, sort of modulated depending on how we treated them. I didn't want to make fun of any of them or, or you know, destroy any of them. We, we kept the ones where we felt like we were able to keep the soul of the songs. I definitely heard that in listening to the album. Um, so where were you guys last, I guess, before coming to Denver? Uh, we were in Salt Lake City last night. That's cool. And how was it? It was great. We got up at 7 o'clock this morning. And we actually got up at 6 and drove all day. And went and played on the radio station. And then just came here, loaded in, sound checked, and then we'll be playing in about an hour and a half. Sweet. And so uh, where are you guys headed after Denver? Uh, back to Austin. Uh, we've been on the West Coast for the last couple of weeks. Um, so we're playing a show in Austin on Saturday. And then uh, have a couple of weeks off before we start an East Coast tour. So, we're going to Europe after that. So then out of everywhere you performed, like, where would you say is your favorite city and maybe favorite venue? Jeez, it's so hard <laughs> to say. I mean, like, it's always fun to play, like, the Bowery in New York. Um, like, the Independent in San Francisco a lot. But it, it just varies so much. Any show can be a good show. Mm -hmm. um, any place can be a good place for a show. And sometimes the shows you look forward to the most are not the ones that work out the best. And then shows that you're dreading, so then turn out great. So it just varies a lot. Cool. So, uh, given that Shearwater is a type of bird, how much did your studies of ornithology, because I was reading you studied ornithology, yeah, um, influence your lyrics or themes for your album? I mean, I've only got one song that's got a lot of birds in it. And it actually, I mean, some people could thought that I'd write all my songs about birds or something. I really don't. I, mean, I like birds a lot. I'm not like a bird fanatic. Um, there's one in particular that I've studied down that lives down in the Falcons in Tierra del Fuego that I really like a lot. And it's sort of my... You know, totem animal. Uh, Spirit animal. Yeah, but you will. it is. It's called the striated caracara. It's, it's a really intelligent, social, um, peculiar bird of prey. Cool. But it doesn't, you know, as far as that affecting the music, um, I'm sure it does in some way, but I couldn't tell you how. Not like directly, like, this no. song is a song about the pigeon. This yeah, song is about um, the No, no, <laughs> oh, not happening. <laughs> Somebody else has got to do that. For sure. So what are some of your biggest hopes and dreams for sheer water? Oh, God. I mean, in a way, I've, I've gotten to live so many of them. I mean, I never would have thought I'd still be doing this after 12 years. Um, so I just feel really lucky to to still be playing music with talented people and be able to make records. Um, so I mean, it would be wonderful to sell a bunch of records and you know, be able to afford health insurance. But, um, besides, you know, maybe you know, maybe more money. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm happy with how things are. Cool. And then I guess, what is one piece of advice you could give to anyone looking into going into the music industry in any capacity? Don't do it unless you can't imagine doing anything else. All right. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Great advice. Thank you so much for your Thank interview. Thank you. Oh, man.